I have Felix, Tanika, Savannah, Calviana, Andre, and Ronisha. For post-traumatic stress disorder, do you know anyone or are you reliving any traumatic events, domestic violence, drive-by shooting? I witnessed a lot of things happen here in, 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 in Rivera Beach. I witnessed it, people getting murdered uh, and felt helpless to watch someone's life just drift away. And at times I, I, I look back on those things and I can still see those images of young people. When I say murdered, I'm talking about young people 15 and under. This is how young they were. And to watch them lie there and uh, gasping for air. And that leaves an image in your head, in your mind, that you want to do things where you can help someone else and help an organization or be a part of something that, that you can do to change someone else's life. Because when I was coming up, when we look at obituary, we saw elderly people that was an obituary that was, that was passed through. But now, if you look at obituaries, you'll see mainly young people, your guys' age. And that's how far we have turned and things have changed. And we have to get back where the young people are able to take care of the elderly people again. And that's not what's happening. So yes, those are traumatic experiences. I live them all the time about um, why uh, things like that happen. Um, at the same time, what can we do about it? <clears throat> For race-based stress, what is it like to be a black person in the world of being judged? You? Well, take that. I, I, I've experienced that, uh, especially when I got into the Marine Corps. Uh, Marine Corps at the time was predominantly a white branch. Um, most of the people were going to the Navy, black people were going to the Navy and the Army. So getting into the military, uh, I got a chance to experience that firsthand when I graduated and got stationed at my actually second station, which was New River Air Station. Now I was the E3 at the time, but because I had finished so high in my graduation, uh, I came into the to my first duty station, and and, and when I reported when I reported there, uh, they put me in charge, and I was. I had E4s and E5s that was outranked me, but I was in charge. And they, they took exception to that. They felt that they had did their time, they should be in charge. So I, I, I kind of got a lot of the, 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 uh, the racial stuff, um, but it was quickly uh, taken care of um, when I reported it to the, the COs and commanders and officers. So, but yeah, you get a chance to see a lot of things in, the reason I was I did exceptionally well is because when I reported to my first duty station, this this young man came up to me. He had been in the military, the Marine Corps. I think he said for 10, 12 years, and he said, "Let me tell you something. The way you're going to make it in the Marine Corps, number one, is to be good at what you do. No matter what your job is, be good at it." And that's what I learned. To I learned to be good at what I do because then you need it. So once you you need it, and they know that you can't make certain mistakes that they could depend on you, then you're not expendable uh, to the point where they want to, what I would do with top secret information, you just can't hand that out to anybody. So make it your point, whatever you do in life, and you're going to probably experience some racism, but be good at what you do. And if you're good at what you do, a lot of times they're going to outweigh what they're trying to do. For black on black crime, how do you feel about police officers shooting blacks when they don't have any weapons? That hurts me to my core. I, I hate to see that, and we live it all the time. And I think that's because uh, they've gotten away with so many things over so many years um, that they felt that it was something that they can get away with, that they'd never be prosecuted. And it bothers me, and the main reason it bothers me because I would say as a whole, black people really don't have a problem uh, living or communicating with other races. I think it's to the point where other races, such as the white race, sometimes feel like they're above the black race and they don't want to communicate or be a part of the black culture. So I don't, I don't think it's so much as us can't fit in with them. I think it's more so that they can't fit in with us. So when it happens like that and it makes it 
worse when it, you see it goes to trial. Uh, first, even getting the document um, to, to get the trial uh, because so many has been swept under the rug. But I think now uh, with the new age, the cameras, the, the phones and things coming out, we're, we're able to, to kind of curve it a little bit because we have more proof. Uh, back in the day when someone, uh, an officer killed a black man, it was just his word against the black man. You'd have a, a way of, of communicating, a way of showing it. Now I think with the way of the, having proof that they can say, well, I see it on camera. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's a white officer, a black officer, uh, and when it's a black officer, I think it's even worse because we already go through so much when it comes to law enforcement. I mean, to have crime against our own um, is terrible. Uh, it's, that's, that's, that's one way of we exterminating our own race. Uh, so I think we got to think about what we do as a race before we act against each other. We should be able to do like my parents. You know, you should be able to, to be able to sit down, talk to each other, and work things out. It shouldn't all be about, well, weapons. And then who suffer? It's not the person that they murdered is suffering anymore. It's the people that they leave behind. So when people commit these crimes, they, oh, I got my man. He's shot. He's dead. But he's not feeling anything. You have torn so many lives apart um, that's still here. Uh, whether he had kids or uh, family, those, those things are going to be remembered forever. So you're tearing away more lives than just the person that you're after. How do you feel about the future of Florida State education? Well, I, I, I don't have a good feeling about it right now. But I'm optimistic, and there's a God. So right now you see where the governor is trying to uh, actually stop us from knowing about our heritage. Because if you know that you're kings and you're queens, then you're going to act accordingly. And just to have a black history, know that you, where you come from. A lot of times we don't know where we come from. So when you don't know where you come from, you don't actually know where you're going. You know, we're existing. But if you look at and start reading this stuff, and I, I, I'll charge all of you guys right now. Now, don't just wait for it to be taught. You have books. You have the internet. Every day, go on there and, 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 and Google black history and learn something about black history every single day of your life. See, when you know where you come from, you could do better. You could teach someone that's coming up out of you what they're worth. See, knowing your worth is a, is a, a it's tremendous. You know, we, we look at wealth. We look at wealth in this country and we say, well, white people have everything, the black people don't have anything. But do you know the richest man on the earth ever was a black man? His name was Massa Musa. So when you learn some things that you don't know, is it's that that we don't have to, we had our own black Wall Street and they saw it was thriving. It was burnt to the ground. Learn these things and, and understand these things that you can achieve and obtain those same things by being an individual. You don't have to go to a school. You don't have to do one of those things. Learn those things on your own. But for the education system, we're going to continue to fight because we know that black education, Afro education, all those, we learn about the Holocaust. We learn about uh, 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 American history. We learn about all those other things. Why not black history? So let's continue to, to, to don't give up. Let's strive. We're going to continue to fight. And we know somewhere down the line that we're going to be able to have Black History taught in school again. For economy in the black community, how do you feel about the effects of economy? Well, you, they always say your dollars makes makes a whole lot of sense. That, if you understand, black people we take our dollars, we we spend them as well because we don't own a lot of businesses anymore. Um, when it comes to the stores, those type of things, but we got to learn to support the black businesses that we have. You know, let's take our dollars, support the black businesses. Um, we'll go to all the other establishments. We'll go to the McDonald's. We'll go to, but if, if a black person open up a store in our market up in the complex up there, and, and we don't want to patronize them as much uh, because we're so used to going to these other things. Let's take our dollars, because if you was coming up as an employer, employer and you want to have your business, you will want the black support. So let's try to support the black families and the black businesses so they can thrive. So in, in turn, you can get a job there, learn what, they, what you want to learn, and maybe you want to open up a business. We got to learn it to, to help each other along the way so we can continue to thrive as a community and as a race. For racial profiling, how do you feel about the officers who target individuals for suspicion based on race or national origin? 
Well, you, you, those kind of things you can never feel good about. But you got to understand those things are happening. Those things are reality. We can't act like it doesn't happen. Uh, we, black people have been targeted all along. You know, that's why they have what they call pro, for-profit prisons now. You know, prisons are for profit. You got to understand, you're not slaves, but that's modern-day slavery. So when they lock you up in for the same crime, you go and you may do something, you steal something that's worth three hundred dollars, and you end up getting ten years for it. That's not because they 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 just single you. Out. That's because it's a it's slavery. It's modern. They, they want your free service to continue to do what they need you to do in prison. So they're gonna make sure that you get more time than your counterparts. So that's what we got to come in and say, well, yeah, they're going to race the profile. You're, you're going to get pulled over for a, a traffic ticket, and they're going to turn into something else. So we're going to always have that, that until the law, until the law uh, changes, until our government do criminal reform, we're going to have those things. And that's what we got to continue to push for. You guys can do it also. You still, you, 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 until you get to voting age, but you could. You got senators, you got governors here, you got your elected officials here right in Riviera Beach that's on the city council. Push them for to go and fight for your rights, for your criminal reform laws. You don't want to be stigmatized as if someone sees you, you automatically uh, a threat or you automatically going to do something that's going to that's going to bring down the community. So you don't want to be racial, racial profile all your lives. You want to get to the point where you can be able to, to go outside or go wherever you want to go and not have to be stopped by the police officer. So let's push for these laws, continue to talk. And I, I want you guys to be more involved in, in your community, more involved in your, your, when I say community, your meetings, what goes on here in your city. You know, you don't, I'm not telling you to get the newspaper and read the newspaper every day, but every other Wednesday they have city hall meetings. You know, find out about what they're talking about. You know, find out what district you live in and talk to your, your commissioner for that district. So find those things out, and, and if you say questions you're asking me, I want you to propose those questions to your district uh, 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 representative. They know that you're engaged, and these, we have these things all the time at the marina, different places, I want you guys to do that. So find out what you can do and, and try to make a change. So don't just let this class be what you have as an interview. Let it be a stone, stepping stone for what you can do in life. So find, be, be more involved. You know what I'm saying? I want you guys to be more involved. So next time I talk to you, I want to find out what are you, at least one of you guys and find out who is your your your, your district uh, commissioner, so you can ask them these questions. Tell them your concern, and you want to, you, you want your education to be taught. You know, we I don't know if you guys know Edwin Ferguson. He has a law firm right here on Blue Land Boulevard. He'll be coming in. Okay, he's going to be one of you. You're going to ask him these questions because he's just been on put on the school board. So you want those things taught. What is your opinion on on CRT? Well, my opinion on this is a bunch of crap. You know, that's that's another way of of trying to make them legitimize what they're doing. You know what I mean? They want you to believe that CRT teaches young white people not to be stigmatized for, for learning about black race. And that's not how it is. It's, that's not what it's about. I don't think you go to school, I don't think young man back there go to school and we start thinking about, well, you hear stuff about, about the black race, about slavery, that it makes him feel, well, he's responsible. Or it makes a, a other white person feel that they're responsible, their kids are responsible for what happened in slavery time. That's not, that's not true. It's the thing that they want, they, they critical race period don't, don't worry about what the black youth is feeling. So if we have critical race theory, when you talk about slavery, and it doesn't make a, a black person say, well, you know what? The next white person I see, I'm going to go knock him out. You don't think that way. You're learning about heritage. So when they try to make it weird about putting, pitting white people and black people against each other, it's wrong. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make it feel like, well, if the young white kid learns about slavery, then they feel like they're putting all the burden on them where they're responsible so not a, the little black kid is not going to like them. No, that's not. Today, Black and whites are more friendly with each other than ever before. You know, I have a lot of Caucasian friends, Spanish friends, everything. So don't let them think that with critical race theory that you divide your friendship with another race. Don't let that happen. And you don't never, and I don't think they're ever going to make the little white kids feel like 
they're responsible for for what their ancestors did. Because the fact that of current race there, it happened. Slavery happened. It's not one of those things that you're trying to say, well, we're going to make like white people did this to a race. It happened. So when you have an event that happened, then you got to uh, understand and want to be taught by it. You want to learn why it happened, how long it went on. Now, where we are today, are we past that? Are we getting to a point where people can live together and not have this kind of racial divide? And I think with the governor, with this political race theory, with this CRT, he's trying to divide the country. Trump did the same thing. President, former President Trump did. They want to divide the country, and then they want you to feel like you're responsible. So when you have a black march goes on, they want to say, well, here the Black Matters movement going to march, and they're responsible for this, they're responsible for that. But then when you have the insurrection at the White House, when mainly the white people went in, it was just a visit, went wrong. See, so you got to understand the difference, and you got to understand that no matter what they try to put in your head, that don't let them divide you, don't let them break you. You're strong enough to know the difference.